Well, it's nice to know that you have ass muscles. You know, I don't think some people even know that they exist. So your ass muscle is not atrophied yet. Astrophied? It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's Superhero Slate. Hello everyone and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest super entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name's Mike Royer. And this week, we're going to talk about the Dark Phoenix casting. Okay. Phoenix. Phoenix. Fe- not Phoenix. Phoenix. <laughs> I've already messed this up. we got a new composer on Justice League, Mike. We're going to talk about what that means for the movie. All right. There's uh, quite a bit of Spider-Man news we're going to throw in here, actually. Well, yeah, week. it is a fast approaching. It is very, very much getting closer and more. So yeah, and and we're kind of a, I, I don't necessarily want to say shooting at the hip, but we definitely are hitting the ground running here. Because uh, usually on Sunday we have time to prepare, we're pretty leisure. But you just came back from a trip, and like you literally like just got out of a car. Yes, uh, I've been all uh, since Thursday night afternoon. I've been in Detroit, Michigan, mm-hmm. um, taking part in the Detroit Comics Party, which. Ooh. It's not quite a comics con. It's more for like, um, are you familiar with the idea of a zine? A zine, yeah. Like people are like, these are independent creators and publishers, and it's a free event for them to come and set up, and it's free admission. And it was in this very old, almost, I would say like kind of dilapidated building downtown, but mm-hmm. it gives to the aesthetics of like these underground, like punk people, kind of like people creating their own comics, creating their own content selling their stuff and you know getting by without having the big name recognition of like comic cons and and dealing with that kind of stuff yeah that's right so uh, it was very interesting i went up uh, we there's a local artist from detroit his name is parasol and i gotta give him a shout out here because um the way he creates his comics he's got several series i think i counted six series i bought one of every copy he had this weekend Uh uh-huh um and he creates he, he he writes them i believe on eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper folds them in half and that's his comic book wow and, and he he dates them and labels them and some of them go back to like 2003 i saw on the <laughs> dates on these wow and um and his, his, like you know he's out there just doing his thing man like he's not concerned with you know like criticism or trying to make it big and i know he he's working on a, an animated series about this duck uh character he has um, that that's on YouTube, but I mean, you know, he, he's just infectious. He's always happy. A lot of people were there just because of him. If I was going to be honest, um, mm-hmm. so I, I got to give a shout to him. I bought some artwork um, off a. I don't. I don't. I can't think of her name, but I bought my wife some artwork. There's a cats um, as playing as like a big band on a stage, um, and then they got. She had one called Potter, or yeah, I think it was Hogwarts gear, maybe. And it was individual drawings laid out, like if you packed a bag from Hogwarts, what would be in it, kind of thing. Oh, that's cool, man. So uh, I'll definitely probably take a picture of those two. So I definitely think, um, and, you know, it's a very small event. It was free admission, and it was great. But but all in all, I had a good time. And uh, it's a Pokemon Fire and Ice event this, <laughs> this weekend as well. So um, I'm going to say for a Comic-Con, I might have gotten a little bit of a sunburn. And, uh, <laughs> and we went – We I got a lot of steps in this week. So Yeah, well, spe- well, Brian. Well, well, special thanks, yeah, to friend of the show Brian because we were having some schedule conflicts this weekend. And we're like, all right, well, if we can't quite meet up, you literally were like in physical proximity to Brian. Mm-hmm. And you guys – we got a microphone and you, were got, you guys are just going to throw down like um, – like a uh, guts to the wind uh, podcast style, so that's awesome. It didn't end up going that way, so I still wanted to give Brian a shout out because later today, like as soon as we're done with this podcast, I'm heading to Universal Studios mm-hmm. to some sort of uh, special Harry Potter World Hogwarts light show. I have okay. no, I have no idea what it is or how they're doing it, but it's a special event. My wife got tickets for it, so we're gonna go hang out at Universal Studios right after we're done with this podcast and. I'll, I'm sure I'll get my fill of minions. <laughs> yeah, you, you might you might get some of that, but I mean that sounds cool. I mean, uh, um, for for what it's worth, I mean I've never I've seen the Disney light show in Florida, mm-hmm. um, uh, where they project stuff on the big castle. So I'm like, you know, they they they've got some nice projectors down there, Mike. Yeah, there's a there's a similar type of light show uh, down in Disneyland where they actually project the show onto like this this mist of water so it almost looks like a hologram Mm -hmm. so it's yeah the light shows are pretty crazy so i just i have no idea what to expect uh but uh i'm definitely expecting to get sunburned that's usually gonna happen so we'll we'll be in the same boat there (laughs) drinking butterbeer 
oh yeah, I'm definitely going to get some butteria today. So, and I'm sure I'll be hanging out with uh, some, with some fathers on Father's Day. Uh, not me, not yet, but uh, I'm sure there'll be, there'll be some uh, fathers out there today. Okay, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, big shout. We're recording on Father's Day. Uh, I've got two cats, and you've got some rats. So <laughs> I guess uh, if we were going to consider ourselves fathers, that, w- that would be what it would be. Yeah, they didn't too. get me nothing except for tiny hard poops. Yeah, I, I, I actually gave my cats treats. So I'm like, there you go. Get out no. of here. <laughs> See, they're just making out, and it's your Father's Day. They're making out with treats, and you got nothing. Yeah, it, I mean, it is, except I got you, Mike, and that's what matters. Aww. We got each other here. <laughs> and you know what we're here for? We're here to talk it, about news. Yeah, the news. Let's jump into it. So we're going to start with, I think, one of the biggest bits of news this week. Um, there's a bunch of X-Men Dark Phoenix information coming out of the woodwork here. And we are quite a bit away from it, and I don't want to bring down the mood. We, we know how we feel about X-Men movies. Like, <laughs> uh, the team-up movies, at least. So mm-hmm. I don't want to bring it down. But it is, we have confirmation that Brian Singer will not be directing this one. Mm-hmm. And he'll be handing the reins over to Simon Kinberg, um, who is very hit or miss. I think he's like, um, what's the DC guy that we always talk about? Um, uh, who, who did the Blade movie, like some of the Blade movies? Uh, uh, we're talking about Goyer? Yeah, yeah, he's like the David Goyer of the X Men uh, universe. Like he's either hit or miss. Yeah, and uh, it, and and it looks like he, you know, this is going to be his, I would think, directorial debut at least according to IMDb. He's kind of more of a uh, of a p- producer writer, so this is going to be his first foyer into directing. So I hope it works out for him. Yeah, well, I think he's got a a, a lot of good cast members who might know what's what's going on, mm-hmm. and um, what what's interesting is they've also revealed that um. He is that this movie, X-Men Dark Phoenix, much like we predicted, is set in the 90s because they're jumping decades every <laughs> oh time. Right. It's okay. You know, I'm going to give him that because it's actually set directly in 1991. And do you know why 1991 is special to X-Men people? Uh, is that when the the cartoon show debuted? I know the cartoon, I think, debuted like 93, 94. Mm-hmm. But many characters in the comic books received a huge costume makeover in 1991. Oh, uh, cool. Whenever it got a new artist, a new writer... And those those looks directly inspired the, the animated TV show. So, I see. So maybe we'll finally get that uh, '90s X Men vibe that we've wanted for so long, since everybody loves that cartoon. Uh, I mean, and I think a lot of people were disappointed with the last X Men movie because we got Jubilee, but Jubilee pretty much did nothing. <laughs> yeah. They never ended up going to the mall and hanging out. Or well, they did, and they came back to basically an exploded X Mansion. Um, so Came back to one of our favorite scenes. With yes. The- so, I don't know. Like I've complained a lot about how it's really um, it's hard to age these characters decades at a time. It's kind of unbelievable at points. But I was just actually I was just talking to my father today on the phone for Father's Day. And we were talking about how weird it is how they can de-age actors like in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and Ant-Man. So um, <laughs> maybe they can go the opposite direction. Just add some wrinkles to them in post. Just track – I think I think what you – what do you track the eyeballs and after effects, throw some wrinkle effects on their face? There you go. Well, maybe, well they did that. puff them up Mar- a little bit. <laughs> Marvel did that in Winter Soldier with Peggy Carter. So mm-hmm. uh, we know what's out there. Um, and, and, you know, Marvel always does a good job of their stuff, but they got money to throw at it. Yeah, um, but but indeed, this is this is Fox. So who knows? Yeah, it definitely is Fox. So, um, you know, we 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 got to be worried. I'm I'm a little more weary of Kinberg because he wrote his last two movies were Fantastic Four and X Men Apocalypse. Ugh. But we're here. No, we're not here to talk about bad things. We're here to talk about the people who are going to build them up. But I think the returning cast list um, is probably going to be the most impressive thing here because we have at least I think what one two three four five six seven eight people returning from the last movie. Yeah, there's uh, one name. Franchise. There's one name that I thought I wouldn't be seeing here. That's for sure. So, is it the first one with Jennifer Lawrence? Yeah. Yes, I thought she was done with this movie. I don't know if it was uh, her her idea when those rumors popped up a while ago that she wasn't going to be returning, or if she thought she was better than the X Men universe, or maybe she likes that X Men superhero money uh, because it seems like everybody wants to be under that tent. So, I don't know why she's st- if if she's going to be in it, at least make her true to her character. You know, make her like a side character, make. Her or a villain. Don't make her the main character like they've done well, with so, so many other movies. So I think the the first several here are going to be returning in a limited capacity. Mm-hmm. And, and I say this simply because we saw Mystique training the team at the end of the last movie. And at least if they sh- bring her back for a little bit, they could be like, you know, we, you know, she's kind of handing over the reins a little bit. Because if we just ended with Apocalypse and jumped in with none of those characters coming back, the 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 big four from the first trilogy. Mm-hmm. It'd be very confusing because, <laughs> like, they just didn't hand it off very well in Apocalypse. 
But um, so we have Jennifer Lawrence coming back. We have Michael Fassbender as Magneto. Um, again, an inspired casting decision in the first place, back in first class. So uh, James McAvoy is as Professor Xavier coming back, and this time he's shaving his head. Uh, <laughs> there we go. I think he hid his hair in first class and Days of Future Past, but in um, actually Apocalypse, they shaved his head uh, for the scene. So um, he posted something on Twitter with a his razor. Uh, <laughs> committing to a role. I, I wonder if there's a uh, if there's a pay increase for him uh, shaving his head in his contract. I would like to think that I, if I was a big actor and I was forced to shave my head for a movie, I would be like, okay, I'm gonna need the I need, I'm gonna need my hair and my scalp insured to make sure all this hair comes back just <laughs> as beautiful as it was. I think I'm gonna need a little extra money and I'm gonna need an extra big trailer for my bald ass head. Well, I mean, he doesn't look weird bald, so that's, he's got that going for him. <laughs> um, but you know, in Hollywood. Wigs and hair people, dime a dozen. He'll, he'll make it work. Um, but I did, he, he did have the short hair in what, Split? I think he had the short hair in Split movie. Mm-hmm. And um, up, his upcoming one, Atomic Blonde, he still has the short hair. So uh, they it's must growing, have filmed it's all gr- those together. It's growing back. <laughs> yeah, it's coming back. Uh, and also Nicholas Holt as Beast, which I want to see more, you know, Beast in front of like, uh, you know, doing science chemistry stuff in, uh-huh. in a lab rather than running around, you know, being part of the team, mm-hmm. I want to see science uh, beast where he doesn't have a potion to transform himself back. <laughs> yeah, just he needs to stay blue forever. Yeah, just just let let him have it, let him be accepted of it. So mm-hmm. there's that, and then also the uh, four newcomers, uh, Storm, Jean Grey, Cyclops, and Nightcrawler will be back. And I gotta say, I like Nightcrawler in in Apocalypse. I think uh, he had he had some good stuff, some good scenes in there. Yeah, so. I, I I think maybe I'm just gonna have to change my mindset and shift it from. Uh, an X-Men universe to maybe more of kind of like a Batman style back in the day. Like when a, like a new Batman movie came out when we were kids, we never knew if it was going to be good, what, what was going to happen. <laughs> so maybe I'll just treat, start treating X-Men like that. You know, just every once in a while we might get a good X-Men movie. Yeah. We, we get good solo outings is what it looks like right now. Yeah. So, but that, that's fine. I think, you know, uh, I don't have much problem with the cast. I just hope that the writing is done well. Mm-hmm. So knock, knock on wood there. <laughs> But we're not done, because actress Jessica Chastain is in negotiations to play Lalandra, and we actually broke this last week, so we were ahead of the curve. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Lalandra is the empress of an alien empire called the Shi'ar, who lead the quest to imprison and execute the Dark Phoenix, leading into a conflict with the X-Men. This is taken straight from the comics, I believe, mm-hmm. in the 80s or 90s. And, you know, it's about time the X-Men went to fucking space, Mike. <laughs> it is about time. Yeah, let's give her those uh those shiny metal outfits. <laughs> yeah, like, I think that'd be crazy. And that really weird hair. The really shiny, like kind of like a bell, like a bell haircut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I, Jessica Chastain, I think, would be a good good grab for it. So uh, hopefully, we do see the Shi'ar and some aliens. I want to see aliens and X Men. That would be something great to see, mm-hmm. rather than and- just the government and other. <laughs> mutants trying to attack them and boy would it have been easy to uh weave the fantastic four into this if they didn't shit the bed on that one yeah exactly and also you know i tell you what i mean i wouldn't be uh, half upset if all the mutants went into space at the end of this one and came back later in the marvel universe like <laughs> this is where all the mutants went they went to space oh okay <laughs> but yeah oh well but other characters have been kind of you know uh, rumored slash revealed from like script readings like casting calls mm-hmm. including characters like dazzler who was kind of a tease in the last movie uh sunfire uh who is you know i guess has fire abilities mimic uh, a new rogue we've talked about that several weeks ago as well and more mm-hmm. so um uh, i, I want to see dazzler i think a lot of people want to see dazzler rather than just a throwaway uh, reference. I think they had Taylor Swift dress up as her on like a cover album cover or something mm-hmm. in the last one, but they cut that scene as well because they never went to the mall. Yeah, they like didn't go to about. the mall. No, I mean, much like was it Robin Sparkles? We should have gone <laughs> to the mall. Let's go to the mall today. Let's, yeah, don't tell my wife I made that reference. So <laughs> I have to I have to I have to give up the facade that you know I don't like that show. So <laughs> to keep that up. But that's it. Yeah, X Men Dark Phoenix coming up. Probably they're gonna start filming later this summer. Uh, maybe fall. We'll we'll keep you guys posted as more news and stuff comes out. Um, I mean, they they keep threatening us with the Gambit movie, but I think we're definitely <laughs> going to get Dark Phoenix. It does kind of seem like a threat now, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it really does. Uh, so so there's a, there's another studio making threats later on. So we'll we'll get to that here in a minute. Mm. But Avengers: Infinity War is is on our horizon, um, and I'm really excited for Infinity War. I yeah, don't know th- about you, Mike. This movie is what less than a year away now. Oh yeah, it was. It's uh, we are less than 
We're like ten and a half months away. I'm <sighs> closer. And the greatest thing is, is we still get three more Marvel Studio movies before we get this movie. <laughs> Do we ever? Three, um, four. We get no three. You're right. Three. Sorry. <laughs> three really good. I'm really excited for these. So, mm-hmm. and a whole season of uh, Shield that may tie into it. But um, there is, according to an interview with Scarlett Johansson that went on this week, there are 61 to 62 Marvel characters in Infinity War alone. <sighs> Man. And that that's not just superheroes. That, that includes like side characters we've seen before. Mm-hmm. Uh, cross fingers for Agent Coulson to make a return. Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> I really hope they're like keeping that really under wraps for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is a scene involving at least 32 characters at once per <sighs> ScarJo. Man, that is going to be insane. I mean... <laughs> Mike, Mike like fangirls already, but can you imagine yeah. fangirling all over this movie? Like, I mean, that that's basically what the MCU has been building up to. They have all of these characters that they've... It's been easier for to adapt some than others. They've kind of pulled some random ones out of the woodwork that we never thought we'd see. And then we made them, we, we made them all lovable. And then we're just going to throw them all on the screen for you guys. And it's just going to be amazing. I can't wait. I can't imagine how labor-intensive it is to organize a scene that has 32 characters in it that basically it seems like we're all going to be able to recognize. I mean, I mean, we've seen all these movies so many times and they're very recognizable, especially it's easy to pull out the Hulk out of a crowd of people. Um, Mm -hmm. I think maybe some snobs out there might say this is too much, but no, this is exactly what we're rooting for. I mean, we ha- we're not getting this every single summer, and some people might say, well, Mike, didn't you kind of complain about how Age of Ultron maybe had too many characters in it? Or, you know, but no, yeah. I mean, I think this I is going to I think this is going to be one beautiful scene. I don't think the whole movie is going to be like this, but... You, it's, when a, you got- it's an even bigger circle from the Avengers <laughs> yeah, one movie. Yeah, that was... This- that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just ten minutes going around <laughs> to the circle. Oh man! But uh, man, I'm just even more in love with the Russo brothers now more than ever, just because I've been rewatching um, the sitcom Community, uh, the Dan Harmon show, and the Russo brothers directed many episodes, uh, and most notably their uh, kind of paintball action episodes, which are kind of fun. So it's it's crazy to see how these guys have gone from just uh, sitcoms on NBC to might be one of the biggest movies of all time um it's funny superhero movies uh back in the day were breaking like these gigantic records you know then these other blockbusters were doing it too like jurassic world and stuff but i think this one's gonna swing back around and man will this dethrone avatar (laughs) maybe Uh, man I, i i just hope our hype and expectations aren't too high um, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be very solid. But you know how people sometimes set their expectations to... I think Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is a good example where expectations were so high mm-hmm. that if, if if one scene was off, people thought it disappointed. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I do feel like 32 characters, they might be maxing it out. I just can't imagine Infinity War Part 2 or whatever they end up calling it has like 64 characters in it. It's like, oh, okay. Well, it's Maybe like consoles. <laughs> every, every generation, they have to up the bit number by double. So. Yeah. Um, I I I'd, I'd play Avengers sixty four. You know, go get the mm-hmm. old control. No, that's that's a bad joke. I'll just <laughs> so I mean, there's so many characters. I can't even like. I'd have to sit. I could probably sit down and count them out, but I'd have to see who can technically be involved here and who who's not. So mm-hmm. um, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's time to get a new dry erase board, Mike. That's, that's a little larger <laughs> and go to town on this. Yeah, no kidding. So, oh well, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three is coming out afterwards, though uh, we, we don't have a release date, but we know it's coming. And James Gunn uh, has finished his first draft uh, on it, but he's also said he's considering breaking continuity. Mike, oh. how does that make you feel when I say that out loud? I mean, it feels it feels it feels weird, but so far we can trust James Gunn. But what what are you doing here, man? Breaking continuity? So it it, it firstly comes down to what he's referring to and in the first movie there are mug shots of all the characters mm-hmm. and there's stuff on the screen and it's one of those things that he would have to break uh, okay they kind of it's it's kind of that monsters inc problem that they had where i think at the beginning of the movie they said they knew each other since like like preschool or something like that and they had been friends that long so it's yeah. like well how do you have them meet for the very first time in college in a prequel so it's, it's i mean nothing <laughs> universe breaking yeah by okay. any means. like what if, i mean the, the nova Corps could have it wrong for all we know so yeah that's true um but like you know when 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 this is an example when news articles lately i've noticed a lot of this in comic book 
websites, especially the website comicbook.com, every title they have is the most clickbaity fucking title <laughs> I've ever seen. And it just pisses me right off. So mm-hmm. they're like, oh, he's breaking continuity. I'm like, no. He, he, I mean, that's a little detail the average viewer is going to gloss over. And, and, and I mean, they recast Rhodey in Iron Man yeah. 2, and we didn't hear that much. Yeah. You know. So, so basically, he he wants to write something that goes against the little uh, text descriptions that popped up for um, for the Nova Corps when they were looking at uh, the Guardians. Yes. Okay. Yes. Like it says, he said, "There's a lot of background about who they work with, where they're from, and what's going on." And it's one of those things he's thinking about changing. Uh, I, I I think that'll be okay. Yeah. So it's not like <laughs> it's not like oh, Yondu didn't die in the last one. Spoiler alert. But uh, you know, it's, it's not it's not universe breaking. Like, you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I, I, I think I, we'll be okay. <laughs> I think we're going to be fine. So Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is coming. He's working on it. He seems passionate. I mean, I, I follow James Gunn on social media simply because I think of all the Marvel directors, he's like the most vocal. Oh, yeah. He has a great big presence. And so. you should definitely follow him, um, on, at least on Instagram. He put up a video this last week of him doing the motion capture for the Baby mm-hmm. Groot dance at the very beginning of Volume 2. So that was really funny to see uh, just <laughs> James Gunn dancing. And actually, uh, another cool thing, I didn't realize they were so far ahead of the game with motion capture now. He didn't even have any like little trackers on him. He wasn't in like a latex suit with like motion capture balls on him. He was just in his normal clothes. So it's crazy how we can track motion now and you don't even have to like wear a special suit well yeah i mean i think a lot of it comes down to you know instagram pioneered all the, not instagram uh, snapchat because <laughs> of the the mask you can wear that follow your face around everywhere yeah those tracking algorithms man we, we, they need to make a group one so just turn yourself in a group and be your own dude yeah group. you can be like as creepy as the group bread that's at disneyland right now it's kind of weird looking but i want to eat it <laughs> The group group bread. Yeah, if you go to California Adventure at Disneyland in um, in Anaheim, California, you know they theme their treats at the Disneyland parks. So since the new Guardians Breakout Ride is down in Disneyland, they okay. have like a Groot bread. So it's like a piece of bread that's like that's like crafted into a, in the shape of Groot. I have no idea if there's any, if it's anything beyond just bread. I would hope there's maybe some sort of like filling or topping onto it. But yeah, you can eat Groot if you go to Disneyland, man. Wow, I have a group cup from Disney World that my father-in-law sent me. So shout out to him for guiding <laughs> me. I never thought of having group bread, but I, yeah. you know, now we need a Marvel Cinematic Universe cookbook, Mike. Ooh, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll make it. If anybody out there has tried group bread, let me know. I want to know if it tastes good. Yeah, tell us about the group bread. I want to know what. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta know how that tastes like. So that that's awesome. That's awesome for Guardian. So, um, but now we're gonna switch over to what I think most of our our conversation today is gonna be about about Spider Man, Mike. Mm. And and you are probably I think, I mean, you're not the biggest Spider Man fan in the world, but I think you relate to Spider Man character more than you know mo- any other character. Would that be a good assumption? Sure, I think that's the reason people love Spider Man the most is he's very relatable. So he's a nerd with glasses that gets powers. There's so many times I wanted powers when I was back in high school because I was a nerd with glasses. There you go. And you, sometimes you kill your first girlfriend on accident. I, well, I you totally know what, understand. You know what happens. If I would have had one, I probably would have killed her on accident. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so Spider-Man Homecoming, first thing, tickets are now on sale, Mike. I don't know if you knew this or not. It was kind of a quiet release, uh, a quieter release, but um, th- I did see that they are now on sale. So uh, if anyone's looking to get your Spider-Man Homecoming tickets, I guess, what, three weeks away now? Um, yeah, we're, we're getting close. I'm going to be seeing this one on Thursday night, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I waited until the weekend for Wonder Woman. Um, I wish I I wish I wish didn't because that those extra couple days just added to the hype train, which maybe it, it built the movie up a little too much for me. But uh, I'm going to be back to my normal Thursday night schedule, I think, uh, for Spidey coming up. Good, because, I, again, there are, there are always there is an after credit scene for Spider-Man Homecoming. Every oh, Marvel good. movie has one. They've already said it, so we can go ahead and tell you that now. There is an after credit scene. All right, good. Uh, um, also, Sony sucks at marketing this movie, so <laughs> who knows what's going to be revealed by the time Friday came around. Yes, they do. I think out of all of the Marvel movies we've talked about in the show, I've seen the least amount of footage from Spider-Man just because out of protest of Sony's marketing and just showing too much of the movie, in my opinion. So I'm going in pretty blank slate for the most part. I don't. I there's a good chance that maybe I missed some little jokes here and there. From luckily we always we always avoid TV spots, but I have a feeling oh, yeah. that maybe there's a third trailer out there I haven't seen at all. Well, there we, there is because you stopped watching the second trailer. 
Mm-hmm. And then I reported on a third one two weeks ago, and you were like, I'm not watching it. Yeah, that's true. And then there's international trailers, simply because Sony is a, a Japanese company, and you know, they got international versions with even more footage, and we're even different. And all the TV spots are all over the place. Like There was like some basketball game teasers they had lately, because... It was tied into some some basketball. Something <laughs> or other. I don't we know. know nothing about basketball over here. That's for sure. The, I'm just anything that says Spider Man. I don't usually click on it. So <laughs> that's that's the rule going forward here. But the first reviews are starting to hit the internet, Mike. Already. Oh, okay. And um, I know you like to go in clean. Do you want to know what the consensus is yet, or do you want to wait? No, I'm gonna go in cold. I okay. I actually kind of have a guess. I'm gonna guess. Don't tell me if I'm right or wrong. But I feel like this is maybe going to get um, slightly slightly above lukewarm reception. I think people are going to go see it and go, yeah, that was a good movie. Definitely better than the last two Spider-Man movies we got. Maybe not the best Marvel movie I've ever seen, but it was fun seeing Spider-Man and Iron Man go around. It just, from what I've seen with the trailers so far, or the one and a half trailers I've seen, it, I just, it's hard for me to imagine something like big and fantastic happening in this movie since it's going to be a little bit more grounded in New York. So, yeah, I feel like I might leave the theater with kind of the same feeling I had uh, when I left like Ant Man. Like, yeah, yeah, that was good. Good movie. Good, good time. <laughs> okay. I, I like to see the, the, the insect uh, correlation there. So, yeah, there you uh, go. That's good. Okay. I won't tell you whether you're right or wrong, but if anyone wants to know, message me on. Uh, uh, I guess on Twitter, direct message me so I don't tell Mike on accident. Yeah, don't tell me on accident. Um, but uh, I definitely know, and um, I, I definitely look forward to talking about it with you when we do our spoiler cast. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to come back to Homecoming, but I want to skip to the next thing because Spider-Man, the original movies, um, are the Blu-ray trilogy, a new Blu-ray trilogy set is has been released this week, and that includes what is called uh, a, an editor's cut of Spider-Man 3. Oh, man. <laughs> um, which I saw a fan cut of Spider-Man 3 several years ago. I think we talked about this. Um, and I'm going to look it up right now, actually, because it's online. It was a bootleg. It wasn't anything officially released. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's called Redemption. Yeah, and um, it's actually really good. Oh, uh, wow. They, they cut out a lot of the, the sad, like anything Venom-related pretty much, except for the end. Oh, they kind of cut it out. Uh, and, and it makes more sense. It's, it's the chapter's about 90 minutes long. Very, very good pacing. Very, very good. I think it's closer to the script that they were originally wrote than anything. So uh, Okay. I don't know. I mean, I think that this editor's cut may be close to that, but I don't know. Huh. I, I don't know without buying it. Because I already own the Blu-ray trilogy. I, I don't want to go out and buy a new Blu-ray trilogy. I wonder if this editor's cut trilogy whatever will end up on iTunes because I, I'd like to pick this up maybe digitally just because the first two are great especially the second one that's kind of the pinnacle of Spider-Man movies right now so but it would be kind of cool to watch this editor's cut and maybe see what it's like because I haven't seen Spider-Man 3 in so long I don't even know I don't even recall if I saw it after it left theaters so just because it left such a sour taste in my mouth so it would be interesting to revisit it directly to this director's cut or I guess editor's cut and see you know if it changes my mind on it since i'm so you know out of bounds from remembering what happened last time so i'm gonna cross my fingers and hope this goes digital yeah um i mean just from uh some some people who have watched it and, and like took note of the changes mm-hmm. the list of goods um actually very much outweighs the bads of the edit so great great um i, I think the the dancing is still in there maybe i don't, I don't know <laughs> uh, but um yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's on digital or not, but I definitely know it's on the Blu-ray trilogy set. So if it comes out on digital, well, we may we may revisit we may revisit it together. Yeah, let us let us know out there if you watch that editor's cut. I and I'd be curious to know maybe how close it is to that fan cut. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely have to sit down and watch those. It'd be very hard to watch Spider-Man three back to back though. <laughs> like that would be so hard, even on fan cuts. Um, but that also brings me back to Homecoming. Tom Holland confirms that Marvel has plans for a trilogy for Homecoming, Mike. Do you find that surprising? No, not at all, because okay. they've, they've done that with pretty much every uh, character so far. There's been like some talks like at, after Spider-Man was in three movies, he would go back to Sony kind of thing we've talked about that we were all very, very worried about. Like I was mm-hmm. losing sleep over this, really. <laughs> and, and But if Marvel's doing a trilogy, they probably have a six-picture deal where they're like three Avengers movies and three regular movies kind of mm-hmm. deal, so... So we'll, we'll, we'll cross our fingers that Spider-Man Homecoming is 
Yeah. A good, better trilogy than the original. I mean, I would, I would, so I don't re- recall what grade Peter is supposed to be in in high school. Um, I don't recall him being set up as a freshman in kind of the trailers that we've seen so far. So let's assume maybe like sophomore or junior year, somewhere in the middle of high school. Uh, if we have him for several years in this MCU, it would be kind of cool to kind of see him blossom into like a real adult because Spider-Man's always been kind of a, a funny character that's kind of immature but i do like it when he ages and becomes more mature because then he really feels like a hero you know no one's really looking down on him because of his age they more like look down on him just because he's like silly and goofy but i would love to see an experienced tom holland spider-man down the line you know after we've had a ton of movies that would be Mm -hmm. really cool yeah i I agree i think you know watching him kind of age out of that because i think he's like 20 21 now like 19 or, he's older but he looks younger mm-hmm. so a- aging into that and you know getting the high school air a good representation of the high school era would be good so um, really, really crossing our fingers for homecoming mike i i have some very very interesting news on venom and i've been talking <laughs> some of our fans have been writing to me about venom oh man they're, okay they're very angry about venom let me just say <laughs> the consensus is nobody wants the, the sony venom movie Man, isn't that so surprising? If you were to go back in time to this to the original Sony Spider-Man movies, and we heard, oh, they're thinking about making standalone Venom movies, everyone would have been like, oh my god, that's awesome. We're going to get Venom on the TV, on the movie screen? That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, now the, our tastes have matured. <laughs> yeah. The general public has uh, swayed very, very strongly in the opposite uh, direction uh, since Spider-Man 3, I think. So, um which is all it's coming back to Spider-Man 3 here. Spider-Man, Spider-Man 3. It's all very interesting uh, how it connects. But Venom is set to start filming in September is what the re- the reports are saying. So they're right. ready to roll on this movie ASAP. That's surprising. <laughs> very much so. Uh, but also, we've talked about how Kevin Feige said that it's not in the Marvel Universe. Well, he didn't say it's not there, but he has no plans for Venom. Uh-huh. But Amy Pascal, the producer of Sony, has pretty much said pretty much that, yes, Venom is in the MCU. In an interview, that I, I we, we had the video. I, I know you're, you're stunned. You're stunned <laughs> no, really, I, I was. I was trying to think like <laughs> my the gears in my head were turning because okay, so this is what I was trying to do. I was trying to think. Okay, Sony is making all of their decisions. I think based on money. I think as soon as they really start to see how much money spider-man's gonna make for them when it's connected to the mcu i think they're gonna be like they're gonna start letting their guard down i think it's like okay yes i think venom maybe should be involved in the mcu because it's gonna make us a lot of money and if you know we but we got to play a little coy with the with the world out there we got to play coy with marvel we can't just let marvel think they can have any spider-man character they want and strong arm us we got to make sure that we hold some cards close to our chest just in case so but then my head starts going okay so i think everybody really really wants their fan theory to come true where venom somehow originates from the guardians of the galaxy so i'm like maybe this could still happen somehow you know maybe 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 somehow venom comes down onto earth through some sort of random asteroid or spaceship or something and then there's maybe a little throwaway scene in the next guardians movie where we kind of see that happen off to the side let me lay (laughs) let me lay this on you here Uh what if venom is hiding in the infinity war films oh because Maybe. we will have Infinity War one before Infinity War before Venom airs, mm-hmm. um, supposedly. So again, Spider Man the symbiote showed up in the Secret War series mm-hmm. um, in the eighties. Um, so I don't know if he had it when they fought Thanos or not. But seen as that will have a huge impact on aliens coming to Earth in Infinity War, Venom could appear to show up here and become okay. you know, part of okay. the Spider-Man universe. The, the gears are really spinning in my head right now. This okay. is what's going to happen. So you know that giant 30 character scene that's going to happen in Infinity War? So there's tons of stuff going on. There's all these people fighting in space, stuff flying all over the place. Maybe they're like being thrown through like um, some sort of a, a space scientific facility or something like that. Spider-Man's duking it out with some bad guy in some, in some sort of lab. Uh, he gets thrown into like a vat of basically the symbiote it gets on his suit he like freaks out he starts raging but all of a sudden now spider-man tom holland is like super strong because he has the symbiote on him so he starts wailing on the bad guys he's really he's really making strides but then he starts losing himself and he starts just like punching heroes and stuff like that and he's just making craziness so like tony stark or someone else who's like really really smart sees what's happening he's like oh shit there's some sort of bad thing on on peter so 
maybe there's like some sort of harmonic resonance weapon that a character has uh, shoots the shoots the venom off of spider-man you know he's back to normal it's almost kind of played off as like a throwaway scene it's not really an integral part to the whole movie but maybe it's just a, something that happens in the fight scene and then the maybe the venom just flies away and just sticks on the to the milano or something like that and then we do kind of get that black suit spider-man ahead of time the audience is kind of familiar with what it does but we don't really need to sit back and explain it and go into the deep mythos of the symbiote in the middle of this giant fight it's just one crazy thing that happened in a big mess of crazy stuff that's happening and then maybe when it comes down to earth you know now we're a little bit more seasoned with it you know there we go that's my fan theory my gears are starting to t- starting to die down now <laughs> yep you you left me in the in the dust there on that one buddy uh, <laughs> you, you hit 88 miles per hour and I, and I was gone but um so yeah i mean hopefully marvel and sony are listening to us as they tend to do wink wink um <laughs> And hire Mike to write your Venom movie because y- y- you'll need it. Yeah, but, there you go. I'll put in it, a lot of fart jokes for you. Uh, he will. Lord knows he will. So other than Amy Pascal confirming Venom takes place in the Spider-Man Homecoming universe, I think I think Kevin Feige is better at keeping secrets than <laughs> Amy Pascal. And, and this is all true. And all these live-action movies will make sense in the narrative of Marvel stuff. And they're kind of guiding it in the background. Mm-hmm. So I I feel if this is true and and this all works out in our favor, knock on wood, we are going to get some very good, interesting Spider-Man characters blooming in the yes. next few years. This might be the one thing that makes me excited about a Venom movie. If indeed, maybe Kevin Feige has his hands in it somehow, that would make me that would make me happy. <laughs> yeah, I I definitely agree. So I, I other than that confirmation from Amy Pascal, which you know. Who is, I guess, technically in charge of how the property works all, overall? Um, yeah, so that's interesting. So maybe, maybe we'll see something in Infinity War because we've not seen anything on Infinity War. <laughs> like they are keeping that so under under wraps. It's, it's ridiculous. It's so. gonna it's gonna be explosive once uh, Thor Ragnarok comes around. I think we might get our first te- teaser trailer right around that time. Maybe just before Star Wars. I mean, come on, think about that synergy. Uh, maybe Thor Ragnarok wraps up, has great reviews. It's a great time. Everyone's gearing up for the next freaking Star Wars movie. You know, lightsabers, uh, light side, dark side, craziness. Um, and then, man, throwing in an Infinity War teaser trailer in front of that. Ooh, I cannot wait until the end of the year. The uh, the event, the year of the event film is upon Ooh, us. So, yeah. Um, as long as the, the teaser is Patton Oswalt uh, retelling <laughs> his story of how Star Wars and, and the Thanos are related again. Like, I think he did in an episode of Parks and Rec. Yeah, that was amazing. The uh, Star Wars uh, Marvel filibuster, that's great. Yeah, so as long as he's the one narrating this trailer, that's really all that's going to happen <laughs> to me. So, so we got that. So we got a lot of Spider-Man. We're still not done with Spider-Man. We got some later. But, I mean, all in all, Spider-Man feels good this year. I'm now yeah. on a, this week. This week is a good Spider-Man week. Next week may be entirely different right now. But, <laughs> but for this week, see. feels good. So on that note, something we're also looking forward to next year, a good thing from Fox is Deadpool 2. Yes, very and, good. And filming has started on the movie with a return to the X-Mansion <laughs> in a uh, throwback image of the Spider-Man Homecoming poster where Spider-Man's laying on his back in his backpack. Deadpool is laying in front of the X-Mansion. Yes, I love it. I so, hope he just kind of uh, gets to, to wander through the X-Mansion, maybe uh, picking up people's stuff. I would love to maybe see him reenact that. Uh, it's a meme now, but it's basically Wolverine laying on his bed, holding up a picture frame. Picture. And I believe originally he's looking at a picture of Gene, yes. but everybody has Photoshopped everything in the universe into that picture frame. I would love it if um, Deadpool lays down on the bed and pulled up a picture of Logan, that would be hilarious. I think the crowd would lose it at that joke. So I'm looking forward oh, yeah. to something like that. But you can see in the, in the in the image here that he's got, like, his leg wrapped up in duct tape. I love that. I like to think that maybe, like, a piece of his leg, or maybe his leg just in general fell off his body. And since, he, you know, he's got that regenerative power, maybe he just duct taped his leg back on or something, or his suit ripped or something. Deadpool is just, he's so janky. I love it. It is. I, I love how real the suit feels Mm -hmm. like it doesn't feel like you know um i I don't know how to say a fake suit but you know it looks like you could walk around in at a convention and be comfortable (laughs) yeah it looks like hey this guy made this suit for a certain purpose and Mm -hmm. this mercenary guy made this and looks great so um i i'm I'm glad this film and i hope we hear more about it you know this is a a good x-men property we're we're excited for 
And uh, it looks like they're filming it a little earlier than um, I thought they would. I thought New Mutants would start already since it's coming out first. Mm-hmm. But uh, Deadpool 2, there we go. Maybe maybe they'll have... No, they can't because that's 91 and this is in the current time. Who knows how this will work. So, <laughs> uh, Colossus and Negasonic are returning, so there we go. On some more Justice League news today, there's some more shakeups on the film. Oh, man. Danny Elfman has been hired to help score the film. Uh, Danny Elfman is no stranger to superhero properties. I think he believed he did the original Spider-Man trilogy. Mm. Um, and he did come into Age of Ultron to write some music on some of those scenes. Gotcha. Okay. So it seems like this is more of the same what we've been hearing with Justice League. It seems like, you know, they kind of made the movie and it didn't really feel out the way they wanted it to. So they're like, hey, even the music's not safe. So they came in and started to patch the music up, I guess. Yeah, I honestly don't know um, what what's going on here. Like, it's very hard to tell because uh, the original uh, music producer, Junkie XL, who has who worked with Hans Zimmer on Batman v Superman and created that Wonder Woman score that's very iconic. Mm-hmm. Um, he was supposed to just do this whole movie. He has left the project, but I assume most of his music has already been done. Yeah, like, I mean, like they don't wait to the last second to score the whole film. Yeah, I'm sure Danny Elfman can kind of riff on it, take inspiration. Um, yeah, it's really hard to uh, to knock any of this just because Junkie XL did a great job with that Wonder Woman score. You know, you can't really blame a music compose- composer for a bad movie like Batman vs Superman. So uh, a lot of the times when it comes down to music, it's judgment from the filmmakers whether they use what they've made or not. Um, there was a video that was really popular um, sometime last year where they're kind of criticizing music in Hollywood uh, blockbusters mm-hmm. and stuff like that. How a lot of the times director will drop in temp music uh, for their for their movie and let the composer kind of riff off Mimic of that, it. but yeah. but then everything just kind of ends up sounding like the temp music. So hopefully we get something unique and cool here. Um, I would love to have something that feels like. Justice League. I mean, that Superman score from Man of Steel is really cool still, but wasn't that... That was originally... That was Hans Zimmer. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was Hans Zimmer, so uh, I'd love to get more of that in Justice League. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, yeah, I, I don't know, like, so... Um, I, I don't know what to make of this, because I don't know, I mean, how much of Junkie XL will still be used? How much of Danny Elfman? Is he just there to redo the new scenes? Mm-hmm. Um, what What's kind of going on here? So, that's, that's interesting... Uh, to note or you kind of guess on that, but I mean, like I said, Danny Elfman, uh, he's he's no stranger to stuff. I believe it was a Family Guy Blue Harvest where they shot John Williams and then they had Danny Elfman come in to do the soundtrack, mm-hmm. and it was like very like like peppy and like punchy rather <laughs> than that. And I'm like, yep, that sounds sounds like. I think did he also do? I want to say Batman. Did he do the original Batman? Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not sure. Yes, he did. He did the original Batman. He worked with Tim Burton quite a bit. So that's why he did do the original Batman. So there we go. I just want. I was like, man, this is this is gonna kill me if I can't figure <laughs> it out. So again, he's written stuff for Batman. He's written stuff for um, Spider Man, and um, you know other characters. So I think I think we're gonna be fine. I don't think. And he was also in that video that we talked that you talked about the music uh, in in movies mm-hmm. and quote why the Marvel music sucks or whatever. I'm like, it doesn't suck. It, it does the job. But uh, he was very much like, no, we don't. He doesn't like temp music, so he writes everything new from that. So. Yeah. So he's very much against that. Also, uh, some images from the sets of Justice League might show the um, the watch the the Hall of Justice, or or maybe the Watchtower. Looks like is going on here, being built on sets. Yeah, I mean, from the kind of set photo we have here, to me, it looks more like the Hall of Justice. Um, I, to me, it just seems like the Watchtower would just be fully CG, and there wouldn't be anything physically built for it. Yeah, nothing unless, outside. Yeah. yeah, unless maybe this isn't in a facade, and maybe it's like some sort of inside corridor of the of the Watchtower that they build. I think the Watchtower would even be too much of a jump, personally, myself. I think putting the Hall of Justice in the first Justice League movie seems like a bit of a jump. I mean, it made sense that the Avengers had the Avengers Tower in their first movie just because Tony Stark already had that building made and he kind of just slapped an Avengers A onto it. It was, you know, he was already making a tower and it makes sense. But it just seems weird kind of out of nowhere to build a a superhero um, uh, headquarters, you know? So... Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't really know how they're going to work this into the movie organically. Yeah, I, we don't know what it is. It's very far from from a distance to take a look at this stuff. But um, I think you know, 
in in the game um, Injustice, the the loading screen slash menu is the watchtower. Like, uh-huh. look, it's a big circle like that, where where like it's glass. But you're right; they can't just really throw that in there, um, unless <laughs> yeah, you... un- unless it's a dark side ship. No, well, maybe like, that maybe could they be. commandeer a dark side sh- or not dark side, but uh, what's the other guy's name? Steppenwolf ship. Uh-huh. And they're like, okay, well, Steppenwolf's here, and we have a ship now. That's our new space watch tower, kind of thing. So I don't know. We don't know anything about this movie. It, it's being rewritten, reshot, re-scored, like. It, had we watched this movie a month ago and like we know all the things about this upcoming movie, it would have changed by now. So, <laughs> so Justice League is a big, big bunch of question marks. Mm-hmm. So we talked. I think it was last week uh, that uh, Adam West, uh, the original TV Batman, had passed away, but he actually appeared on the an episode of Powerless recently. The show, I think it was on ABC, NBC, mm-hmm. that got canceled. Yeah, and it, it was never released because they canceled it. So they actually released the Adam West episode. For free on YouTube. Yeah, it's on a uh, it's on DC's YouTube channel, uh, and it, I I guess the cynical side of me just thinks, oh, maybe they can get a little bit more viewership for the show, and maybe it'll be enough to renew it, maybe on their digital platform that's coming out soon. But then I tried to kind of push my cynical side away and just kind of enjoy the little moments that Adam West is in this. Um, I don't know the timestamps off the top of my head, but if you kind of just want to see the, the the fun Adam West stuff, about halfway through the through the uh, the video, about ten minutes in, Adam West pops up for a fun little bit where he kind of breaks the uh, third wall and talks to the screen, and all the characters are just like, "Why is it? Who is he talking to?" And then he does the same thing at the very very end of the episode. So if you just want to jump to the middle and then jump to the end, you'll get some fun Adam West moments that are legitimately funny. So um, saw so a lot of people. I was was looking at the comments and I, I was surprised to see a lot of people sad that the show got canceled so uh, there the show did have well, fans and well the, the, if, if they were so sad mike this only has 132,000 views like, that's <laughs> not enough to you got to get you got to get more than that to on a on a weeknight to keep a show going and that's on this is on youtube like there's no entry barrier to entry here so yeah i guess i'm just kind of re- disappointed in the number of views like, like <laughs> 1.2 million subscribers only 132 people, 132,000 well, people watched it. 20, 20 minutes is a big commitment, and uh, YouTube does favor watch time over views. So if we're not so much in the view culture anymore. If all of those people watch 22 minutes of this, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, uh, maybe. We'll, we'll knock on wood. But it opens up with a, a kind of like a, a tribute to Adam West from DC All Access. So mm-hmm. they say this won't be up forever, so make sure to watch it uh, before it's gone. So, uh, very, very limited time to, to watch this. So, hopefully it's still up by the time you guys listen to this. Uh, the link is in our show notes, by the way. So yes. check that out. Also related to Adam West, uh, there was an animated series, uh, movie he did last year called Batman The Return of the Cape Crusaders, uh-huh. which I think was an animated movie based on the 1966 Batman. It had Burt Ward and Julie uh, Newmar returning as uh, Robin and Catwoman. And that this they have a sequel to that that's coming out later this year called Batman vs. Two Face, and uh, Adam West has actually finished his dialogue for it, so it will still be released later this year. With, uh, that's uh, awesome. I love how he still has his uh, his, his roots deeply planted in the in the Batman universe and he's a gift that keeps on giving that's really great I mean we talked pretty in length uh, last week about how you know he we weren't really close to his portrayal of Batman just because you know that was back in the 60s we literally weren't even a twinkle in our parents eyes you know I think I think back in 66 I think my dad was just a kid uh, mm-hmm. you know so even even he uh, probably had a chance to love Batman even back as far as when he was a kid so it's a shame that he's gone but I love that you know that we still get a little bit more of him before he's 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 uh finally set and done with his work yeah yeah and definitely check that out and you, everyone loves batman or dc's animated work anyway so you know it's going to be a solid uh piece by the time you're done watching it so mm-hmm. that's, that's that's a bonus i did watch it with brian we watched a lot of family guy this weekend uh in the background noise while we were uh, in the apartment doing nothing and uh you know adam west is in a lot of those yes so, he as is the mayor and uh, I, I forgot that Peter's boss, Angela, was actually voiced by Carrie Fisher as well. Yeah. So Family Guy lost two big uh, character 
voices in, in this past year. So yeah, um, what's the uh, what's the creator of Family Guy's name again? Seth it's like McFarlane. Right on, yeah, Seth McFarlane. He is a he is a, a hardcore nerd. So uh, some people have really. It's been weird how people have turned on Family Guy uh, over the years. Like when Family Guy first came out, people loved it. Uh, then it got canceled, and then it was reran on Adult Swim constantly. People just fell in love with it even more. Then it came back to Fox, and now it's even stronger than ever. But now people are starting to turn on it again. It's like it's not like hip and cool anymore. But every once in a while, I throw up some new Family Guy that's on my uh, my on my uh, Hulu account, and it's still funny. I mean, like, just get over yourselves, people. <laughs> well, I think it's I think it's one of those things you you either. Uh, die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a villain <laughs> yeah uh, apparently <laughs> kind of deal and you know 15 seasons in i don't even think you know the original showrunners uh are still you know working on it like just pulling up the youtube page this gone through a dozen producers um so you, you never know who's in charge of the show and what they're going to find funny or not so yeah. and um you know in, in a simple case of like the simpsons did it kind of thing like <laughs> yeah. how, how much can family guy keep doing the same thing over and over again mm-hmm. but um yeah not not to become a show about family guy but it was just uh uh i, I it's funny to, to know both of those people were in there quite a bit and, and, and they're not anymore so sorry to hear that lastly we're gonna finish up with some unresolved e3 coverage for last <laughs> weekend uh, mostly because we're not a gaming show like mike doesn't have any new generation consoles do you even have an xbox 360 still uh, no, I don't. I sold that bad boy for 50 bucks. <laughs> there you go. So Mike doesn't have any gaming uh, machines right now, and we're trying to get them to, to the dark or light side. I'm an X, I have an Xbox One and a PS4. Friend of the show, Quentin Parker, has an Xbox One and a Nintendo Switch now. And um, we're trying to get Mike over to one of the dark sides. We don't care which dark side. Well, I mean, we're about to talk about a game here that I think is leaning me towards PS4 next year. Yes. So a big game that was released at E3. The last, the last uh, game on the Sony panel E3 is nine full minutes of Spider-Man Ooh, on the PlayStation 4. It looked like so much fun. <laughs> it is so. I mean, I expected a, a quick trailer. It's been this. This has been teased before. Um, and it, he's got a white suit. You, everyone's going to see it. He's got a white spider on it and, like, white highlights. And stuff, but you can change his outfit if you're worried that you don't like the white. But it plays no. a part in the story. Yeah, that that no, that new suit is awesome. I love that how they're kind of differentiating themselves from kind of just being associated with uh, uh, Spider-Man uh, Homecoming mm-hmm. in the MCU. So they're like, we're going to make our own Spider-Man game with his own costume. And we, we talked in length when this costume was uh, uh, dropped uh, last year. So it looks it looks great to me. Yeah, um, it, it does look great. And you know what's even better is the gameplay because it looks like it's um, – everyone's called it you know, Spider-Man Arkham because it's got the Batman Arkham kind of flow of combat where it looks like you can combo stuff, dodge things, mm-hmm. and really just you know use your multitude of web combinations, I think it said, uh, taking down these villains, quote, unquote, villains in the game. You cannot kill them, by the way, so you can't, you can't kill them. But um, it definitely has some like linear levels. You get to fight some bosses. You swing through the city chasing helicopters, cleaning up damage. Um, there's a, a little bit of a boss thing there at the end. Mr. Negative, by the way, is at the end of that, if you didn't know who uh-huh. that was. And uh, I think the another big thing at the end is a Miles Morales teaser. Yes, I totally forgot about that. So that's really cool. And it's not just kind of like he was in the background, like he had like a speaking role and everything. I would love to see maybe if the story somehow ran parallel with Miles, or maybe that goes even crazier. Maybe you beat the story mode and then you get to play a whole new story as Miles. That would be crazy. I mean, I've criticized DLC a lot in in the past, the few times that we've talked about video games on the show. But, I mean, if there was DLC for this game where you could play a full-fledged story mode with Miles, that would be awesome. Because he also, and it would be uniquely different too because he has different spider powers that you could play and it would change the mechanics of the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, I mean... Miles's villains, actually, I think are you know even different than regular Spider-Man's villains. So you could mm-hmm. actually open it up and, and make it that much larger. So I mean, yeah, there's definitely quick time events. There's, it looked like the city is open swinging. He, they didn't do any of that in the demo, but the link below is nine full minutes of gameplay. And a, it looks beautiful. Mm-hmm. B, it looks fun. And C, it looks to capture that magic that everyone wants of Spider-Man Two. 
Oh from, yeah, from uh, the uh, two generations ago. Yeah, so. just being able to swing around the city, oh, it was just so satisfying. I would love to see if maybe there's going to be some sort of VR component to this, because maybe that would uh, get me to buy that uh, PlayStation VR headset. I don't think necessarily I need to be first person in the head of Spider-Man. That would be really fun. That would really make the immersion of web swinging uh, super thrilling. But at least if I could kind of get my head down there a little bit more, oh, that man, that'd be fun. Uh, yeah, that that magic from Spider-Man Two was just so good. They just nailed that web swinging mechanic, and mm-hmm. the only the only reason I'm I'm going on and on about it is I regularly have dreams, like real life dreams, where I'm Spider-Man swinging around a city. It's just such a fun, uh, it's just fu- it's such a fun, exhilarating feeling to have. So. Hoping I can recapture it. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll knock on wood there. Um, but so I think Spider-Man Four definitely blew us both away. Uh, probably everyone who watched it blew away. I, I mean, everyone was talking about it on Tuesday. Uh, that I knew, I ran into who, who knew anything about E3. They're like, oh my gosh, that, and then the the Miles t- teaser and stuff like that. So really excited to see that and play it. I like his eyes are the homecoming eyes. Like mm-hmm. they have, like it's it's taking different bits of all the Spider-Man to make it one one different one. So. Uh, that was really cool. Another thing I thought was very interesting in Spider and PlayStation Four. I believe you watched it live with us this this stream, maybe. Mm, is the I, God don't, of- I, I don't think I did, but I did go back and I did my wrap up watches. Okay, so. so the God of War Four is really interesting because it's actually God of War is like Kratos and he goes to take down like the Greek gods in the mm-hmm. first games. In this one, he's going to fight Norse gods and Norse mythology, which is you know because of Thor and Loki and stuff like that. I think very very interesting to see him going out and doing that. And yeah, at the End of the trailer, we get to see the world serpent, which is actually really huge in Norse mythology. Yeah, that would be cool. I mean, uh, God of War, people love that game out there. Uh, my One of my best friends growing up, Adam, he was really into the God of War game, so I'll have to ask him if he's excited for this, because I think I'd trust his opinion. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, I played a little bit. Um, my roommate had a PlayStation 3 in college, and, we, and we, I played a little bit of it when he wasn't around, but um, definitely, I think, you know, again, Norse mythology, you know, it, it just looks fun, open, and a lot of a hack and slash, if you will. Some, yeah. Some mindless fun. Uh, as for PlayStation, uh, you know, not much else to talk about there. But Nintendo, a lot of people have been talking about the Mario Odyssey trailer, Super Mario Odyssey trailer, Mike. Uh, and you, I just, I just watched it literally right <laughs> before this. So yeah, it was it was really fun, kind of you seeing you react. You're like, wait, what? What's? <laughs> why is there a T Rex? There's some sort of song going on about a hat, Mike. <laughs> so, so the. My sister-in-law bought a Switch, I believe, on Wednesday or Thursday of this week, finally. Mm-hmm. And we know, friend of the show, Quentin has has a Switch. Um, I'm not sold on this console just yet. It needs to be cheaper and more available and have a lot more games than it does. But Mario Odyssey, I think it's trying to capture maybe the magic of Mario 64. Yeah, it is. Are you familiar with that one? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm not as familiar with it. But, like, the graphic fidelity... Has like eight different graphic fidelities. And <laughs> yeah, like the T Rex really... looks picturesque, but there's still Mario, and his hat has eyes. Yeah, basically, Nintendo's great at reminding Western audiences that Japan is weird. Sometimes you think, you know, Japan, oh, you're making kind of cool games, you know, you know, I'm familiar with, you know, how weird anime can get, but then sometimes it's just like, oh yeah, Nintendo is in Japan. Reggie, Reggie Fizame, he's just the Western mouthpiece. You still got some weird stuff going on over there, so. It's really weird, like the hat mechanic where you can kind of possess enemies. It looks like it could be kind of fun. Um, I don't know, man. The Mario, every Mario game, like a, every full fledged console Mario game, has been good. Like they've never made a bad one. Uh, some have been less kind of, um, I think, marketable, successful. Uh, I think maybe Sunshine didn't do as well as they wanted it to, but uh, yeah, every Mario game has been great. And probably, I, I'm a big fan of pa- the Paper Mario series. Oh yeah, probably hasn't been. Um, that financially successful as well, but like, it's just weird to see like it's got real like real life graphics of a T Rex kind of and thing. real and real people too <laughs> and real people in like a modern era world. But you also throw your hat to get ghost coins. I think the hat's <laughs> yeah, possessed by a ghost. It's gonna be weird, man. <laughs> it is gonna be so weird. So uh, hopefully, you know, I think it comes out later this fall. So you know, we'll be we'll be hearing more about it. Um, I just wish Nintendo gave us a prop, a new IP, like a new property that wasn't a rehash of something else. Ain't gonna happen, Chris. You're gonna have to suck it up and, and stick with your Zelda and Mario's. <laughs> yeah, Zelda, Mario, Metroid, and um, Kirby. I think was all they, <laughs> they talked about. So they got that going for them. So that's Nintendo. But lastly, um, oh, this was on the Xbox panel, but Bioware released a new IP, which is why I brought it up uh, in a mm-hmm. game called Anthem, which 
kind of blew me away. I, yeah, I, I was sold on Anthem. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know much about Bioware except they make the Mass Effects games. I've never really played any of them because obviously I'm kind of a video game noob at this point in my life. Uh, but basically everyone's describing this game as the Iron Man simulator. The whole concept of the game is you're a freelancer type of uh, militia person, possibly. A hitman, I don't really remember. But basically, you just customize your armor, and you can kind of play the game you want to play it. And I'm a sucker for jetpacks. Any any sort of gameplay where I can fly around in the jetpack and just be as obnoxious as possible, I'm super down for. So uh, I'm hoping this drops on a console I end up uh, buying uh, because it looks really fun. I love mech suits, man. Yeah, we are, we are over a year and a half away. This is a fall 2018 release, so this is very early. But it looks like... Um it looks a lot like playing Destiny. You group up with your friends and go on quests, but it also kind of meets that Elder Scrolls slash Fallout vibe mm-hmm. where you discover new places, you get experience. Uh, there's a loot system. You get all sorts of loot. But you every there's very much a heavy emphasis on, um, you know, this the suit you call the, the javelins. These exosuits are called javelins. So you can upgrade them, craft them. You can make them your own, really. And um, it is coming out for Xbox One, PS4, and PC uh, next year. But, like... It just looked at like this this demo here. Um, I think it's called Hell or High Water, which it's through like a little jungle piece. Is just amazing, and I definitely think hopefully that knock on wood, this is another um, awesome game from the people who brought us, like you said, Mass Effect, but also Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic. Oh, there you go. So so Bioware has a a huge pedigree, and I think they've delivered uh, on a lot of things. So hopefully we knock on this. Did you call it what is Iron Man Simulator? Yeah, the Iron Man Simulator. <laughs> So, so there we go. But yeah, that's our news for this week. You know, we got comic news, Spider-Man news, video game news. We got everything every week, Mike. But if people want to know about what else you're doing, where can they find that at? Well, they can follow me at Mike Royer Design on Twitter and Instagram. And there you can kind of check out my Comic-Con badge that I got in the mail. Uh, finally, it, it arrived. And they're, doing, they're doing it new this year. They're fancy. Like back in the day, like they just kind of started mailing badges out ahead of time uh, about a year ago. Last year, it just kind of came in an envelope, not much fanfare. But this year, it came in a custom like magnetic box. It came with an enamel pin, a little like tiny brochure with the map of the convention center and stuff. They're really stepping their game up for, for Comic-Con. So uh, if you're waiting for your badge to show up, be prepared. It's a cool little kind of box that you got now that I, I'm going to repurpose and maybe find a way to put cool stuff in it but uh super excited for that and you can also read my web comics at pickledcomics.com chris if people want to see all that awesome art and all that all those kind of cool indie comics you bought this weekend where can they follow you to check that stuff out yeah you can definitely find me on twitter at valdan v-a-l-d-a-n uh probably might do a little recap on there some of the stuff i purchased especially um parasol's artwork definitely to die for um and i think there's a little mini comics called uh like a cynical man, I think is what it was, which I, I find very, very interesting. <laughs> uh, so there's that. Uh, you can read it on Comic UI. Check out uh, Filmside Chats podcast and upcoming uh, DNN stuff. So on my stuff on the Destination Nation. So everywhere, everywhere, everything. But you know, this is just another week for us, Mike. But if this is someone's you know first time listening to the show, where else can they find uh, find us at? Well, as always, please visit SuperheroSlate.com. That is the best place to find all the avenues we host the show and to get our awesome show notes. So if you want to check out all these awesome trailers and things we talked about, don't want to scour the internet for all the places that they could be, just check out our show notes for this episode and you'll get links right to all that stuff. Uh, We are on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Tumblr. You can subscribe and get us right in your email inbox every week and you can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We are out there, people. And if you want to get a Superhero Slate shirt or or a mug or a mouse pad or all the many things that you could slap our logo on you can get that at superheroslate.com slash store if you're a fan of the show please consider leaving us your review wherever you listen to the show that would be super awesome super helpful it helps us get in some fresh earlobes and we really love that and if you're a super fan of the show all you got to do is share the show with a friend share the show with a buddy and we will be here every week hell or high water that's right, or <laughs> Detroit, or wherever we may be. So, um, actually, you know what? That might be some. We we we'll, we'll be taking our, our yearly summer break coming up, Mike. Don't forget that. Mm-hmm. So, but whatever. That's for let's talk for another day, people. We will catch you next week. All right, goodbye, everybody. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. Good thing Brian was uh, a good backup, just in case we needed him. <laughs>